and welcome to the Carla Knits podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, sometimes crocheting, but always all of the yarny goodness that I love. Uh, today is Friday, July 22nd, and this is episode 54. Uh, welcome back to all returning viewers, and if you are stopping by for the first time, welcome and thanks for uh, joining us today. I'm really excited to be back after a three-week break, not intentional, but after a three-week break, so I'm happy to be back and chatting with you about what I have been up to over the last three weeks. Uh, you can find me as CB Crafty Girl on Instagram, Ravelry, and um, on Etsy. I have a shop where I sell project bags for knitters and crocheters. And everything I talk about will be linked down below or show notes are down below. Uh, we currently have two make-alongs going on. We do have a Ravelry group for this podcast. So two make-alongs going on. The first is the Love Your Stash Mal, which is going for the entirety of 2022. And it is to make anything you would like using um, yarn or anything in your stash prior to the beginning of this year. Uh, lots of chatter going on, lots of beautiful finished objects. Um, love looking at all of the things you guys are making and how you are using your stash this year. I'm doing, eh. <laughs> I started out with great intentions, but yeah, I still like to buy yarn. <laughs> so still trying to use my stash mostly, but not doing so well this month. Um, but I draw quarterly prizes, so uh, we've had uh, two quarters go by, and we are in our third quarter, so we will, um, let's see, draw prizes again, let's see, July, August, September, so in October, we'll draw a prize from the chatter and finish object thread, and then after uh, the year is completed. Uh, in addition to that make-along, we have the Merry make-along going on. That's a short, shorter um, make-along in terms of time, and that started uh, July 1st and goes through August 31st, and that is to make things for Christmas gifts. You might want to make Christmas socks for yourself or anything festive, um, just to help us get a start maybe on things that we would be knitting on in December, maybe to take, or November, just to take some of the pressure off if you can get some of your gift makes done. And of course, if you're using your stash, you can put it in, you know, in the other uh, make along too. And as always, feel free to post your objects in other, other make alongs going on. I know there's a few uh, Christmas and July make along. So feel free to put those everywhere. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, speaking of the Merry make along, uh, I only had the chatter thread opened and I realized that while I was on vacation. So I did open the finished object thread for Merry make along last night. So um, go ahead and make sure you post finished objects there. I know some of you have put them in the chatter thread, which is totally great. You can do it in both places, but now if you finish something, go ahead and post that in the finished object thread. And I also, for that make along, will be drawing a prize from Instagram using the Instagram hashtag Merry make along 2022. All right, this week I have four finished objects. Uh, the first two are dishcloths. So I had talked on the last episode how I was behind on uh, the making of dishcloths for the kitchen sink shop. She has a year long pattern coming out each month and this year she is doing it based on some of her favorite books. So for June, she picked Narnia. And this is the dishcloth. So, yep, the dishcloth, I believe, is just called Narnia. And for this dishcloth, I used peaches and cream in the earthy orange. And this is definitely old, old stash. I had a ball of this that I hadn't used. So, i um, glad to have made that dishcloth. 
And then the second dish club I made was for July. So I feel good now that I'm caught up, caught back up with them, um, with the dish cloth club. Of course, you don't have to keep up with it, but for me, that's kind of what I wanted to do. But this is, this is July's dish cloth and it's uh, called The House at Styles based on an Agatha, Agatha Christie book. So I really, really love this pretty lacy texture on here. And this was yarn. Um, I didn't have a ball band. I had a partial skein left that I weighed and I figured I had enough, which I did. Um, but I know that this is a Hobby Lobby. I love, I love this cotton, I believe, in probably a natural or a cream colored. So I really like that lacy that lacy texture on there. So two dishcloths done and feeling really good about um, being back on track now <laughs> with keeping up with the dishcloths. Um, next finished object is a pair of socks. So these are, I will call my Cornwall Cove socks. The, this is just a plain vanilla pattern. Uh, with heel flap and gusset on there. I do the 64 stitches. Uh, this yarn is by Night Owl, Night Owl Fibers in the Cornwall Cove colorway. And this is a pole dark reference. So a show on PBS. So very happy to have this lovely pair of self-striping socks done. And made uh, as part of the summer sock camp. So another entry for that. So really excited to put, put those in. So that's only my third entry for summer sock camp, but I guess that's okay. I've got a couple more socks uh, started, which I'll be showing later. So maybe, maybe there will be a couple more pair entered into summer sock camp, but I need, I need to put these on there too, but really happy to have these done. And I love Love, love, love this colorway. All right, I feel like I'm moving right along here. Uh, my final uh, finished object, really happy with how this turned out. Let's see, this is the right side. This is my flutter wrap. And I don't know exactly if I'll be able to show the whole thing. So, um, so Flutter Wrap by Tiff Nealon. I will put it on for a little bit, but this is going to be really hot, you guys, because, uh, yeah, it's summer and we're under a heat advisory here <laughs> in Nebraska, so kind of warm. Um, yeah, I really like how this, this turned out. This is made using uh, two, uh, two strands held together, so fingering weight, mohair held with a fingering weight slub yarn uh, which you could you could just do two fingering weights if you wanted to i suppose you could just do dk weight if you didn't want to hold two strands of anything together um, but this is so nice and cozy i know i'm gonna love it when it gets colder outside <laughs> right now it's very warm but i love how how it turned out, um, I'll tell you the yarn one final time. So the mohair is You Knit I Dye in the You Make Me Blush colorway, and that took two skeins, although I do have I do have some left of that. Um, the first first part of the shawl was held with a Hawari Bazaar yarn in the Crazy Plant Lady, and then this darker section here was Dilot Studio or is Dilot Studio in the peas and carrots colorway. Now, I did I did make an optional tassel and I don't know which side it's supposed to go on. I think it's instructed to go on on this side. Um, but what do you guys think? Jenna, my daughter Jenna said no to the tassel. Um, what do you, what do you think of that? I, I, I just don't know. So I made the tassel. I think the tassel turned out really cute. Um, yeah, so I'd be curious what, what you think. Should I add, 
Should I add the tassel on onto that? Or, or just leave it plain? And I could probably go, I could go either way. But yeah, it was really fun. Cute little tassel with the, with the mohair, actually with all uh, four, I think I did, let's see, did I do two? Yeah, I did two mohair and I did the two slub yarns when I was wrapping to make my, my tassel. So I'm calling it a finished object because it is, it is, um, but if I add, if I add the tassel, then it will be, I guess it will be more finished. Should I, should I decide to do that? But boy, whew, this is warm, but really, really love this. And I don't know if you can see that fun texture. If I get a little closer with it of the slub yarn in there and the mohair, the fuzziness of the mohair. Yeah, I just, I really liked this. This was a really fun shawl pattern to make. I could see myself making that, making that again. And I think it would be a, a nice gift as well. All right, moving on into works in progress. So the first one is my City Limits sweater. Another warm one. <laughs> For a hot Nebraska day. But this is my City Limit sweater by Tannis Fiber Arts. And you can see I have uh, finished the ribbing and bound, yeah, bound off. That's where I was last time. So, uh, yeah, right, right there. So not quite as much progress as I would have liked. But um, I'm very happy to have bound to have bound this off and last time I had asked I had three different options for uh, using at at the bottom with with the bright pink it I had um, more variegated color I had a bright purple and I had an orange and it was pretty overwhelming everybody said the orange so hopefully you can see how that that looks with the orange, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's a pretty good fade. I think this is my first real faded project. So I'm really, or faded sweater at least, I think. So really happy with how this is. I am gonna go ahead and pick up the neck and do the neck band next. And then I will work on the sleeves. Uh, but I do have to say, I'm not, I guess I haven't been as motivated to pick up this project just just because of of the warmth um yeah outside just because of how warm it is but at the same time I don't want it to be a languishing a languishing work in progress because I really do want to get it done and if it's if it's in the back of my mind that it's there that's probably gonna bug me so <laughs> I do need to keep going with that and just, you know, embrace the air conditioning and the fans, um, cool beverages, water, uh, and just plug on with that, with that knitting of that sweater. So I, I will not go through all the yarns I used on there, but it is included. Um, if you go to my Ravelry page, all of the yarns are listed are listed there uh, with the exception I haven't added that orange one in yet and I didn't even say what that was last week when or last time when I talked about that but that bright orange and he, they called it an orange pink tonal uh, was Hank's Yarning Company um, but I really do like how that blended with with the bright bright pink there at the end so yeah so City Limits Sweater I have two sock whips so my first sock whip is a Christmas sock. So my participation in the Merry Make Along. And this is using deep deep stash yarn. This is a Cascade Heritage Prince. And this is color 26. Obviously a very Christmassy colorway. So I have um, finished through the heel flap and gusset or heel turn. And then I will be um, picking up stitches now along along the gusset. So I really, 
really like this self patterning yarn. Um, somebody did mention, Mallory, I think it was you if you're watching, um, how this yarn is a bit splitty. And I do, I do find that it is, um, when knitting the stitches, sometimes I do split, split the yarn. Um, and I guess I didn't think too much of it till I was working on my other sock whip which is not splitty at all. So, so I'm like, yeah, this yarn is a little splitty, but I still really love it. Um, it's so soft. It's a really nice yarn, um, decent price point for Cascade Heritage print. Um, yeah, so I will, I will go ahead with the splitty yarn. So that's, that's okay, but really, really fun, fun yarn to be working up. Uh, my next sock work in progress is from yarn that I received from my friend Lois for my birthday. Uh, this is called Pink Orchid Zebra and it is by Trunk Full of Color. Absolutely love the color on this. And here is how it is knitting up. Try to get that out of the way. And that is just really pretty. It's really nice yarn to work with. I believe it is an 80 merino, 20% nylon blend. And that is just, it's really been nice to work with. Um, it has a good feel to it. There's a little bit of texture just because of when you get, so you have your regular color, just the plain pink. And then when it gets to where the black is twisted in there, it's just slightly just slightly thicker and so you kind of feel that texture when you're working with it so I really really am enjoying how this is knitting up how it feels the color always been curious how the zebra yarns knit up um, and I just I really love this so I am about ready to start on the the heel flap now I think I've knit what I want to knit so I will be going on to that heel flap and gusset shortly with that sock. All right, we are doing pretty good here. Excuse me a minute. Let's see, I gotta think about what my last, oh, <laughs> my last work in progress. Um, I have started on a baby sweater for my twin nephews, so I'm going to be making two of them. Last time I showed you I showed you some yarn that I had purchased. It was a really pretty blue, like a lighter blue. Um, and it, it's a very, very nice yarn. But then I was thinking, well, the, and it was a merino yarn. But they live in Texas where it is warmer than here. <laughs> and where it is, it still can be warm in the winter time. So I thought I really wanted to make something with cotton. Um, and so I did some digging online and I ordered this Lion Brand 24-7 cotton. So I decided to go with this. Most of the reviews were favorable for this yarn. I have never used it before. It's a mercerized cotton. And at first when I took it out, I thought, oh, that's not as soft as I'd like. But it, it feels actually really nice when I'm working, when I'm working with it. So... I really like it. Um, so I'm going to do, so this is part of um, acquisition too. So I will just need to get into this probably, I don't know how much, but I have two of the blues, which is going to be done. It's the denim colorway. The sweater I am making, let's see, I just started a couple days ago and just put a little bit of time into it, is the D, it's called DNA by Yarn Madness. Um, I purchased this pattern on Ravelry in 2015 and made it for um, a baby shower or a baby that I knew was coming. And I, I knit it in, uh, oh, prob not not uh, Red Heart, but something along those lines, a, a acrylic an acrylic yarn. Um, and it turned out really cute. Um, so I thought, well, I might as well use that pattern since it's already in my, in my Ravelry library. So using stash that way, reusing a pattern. 
and you can see it has that little DNA motif going down the center and it has it going down the back. So it's a little funky on the needles right now. So I hope, I hope you are able to see it okay. Um, but I, I really do enjoy the feel of this and it's going to be washable and dryable. So good, good for a tired young mom or dad <laughs> who has to do the laundry. So this is the denim colorway. And then the other one I'm going to make is in the silver colorway. Yeah. So I think that'll be cute. I didn't want to do, I, well, I could have done two of the same color, which I had thought about originally when I bought that other blue, but then I'm like, I don't know if I want to knit, knit the same sweater twice in the same, in the same color. So I thought, okay, we'll do, we'll do two different colors for the boys. And then they could swap them if they wanted on the babies. So <laughs> I am knitting the 12 month size. Um, and I did not gauge swatch. I am using the recommended needle size. And so I figure since my gauge is usually tight anyways, it probably should be able to fit in those winter, winter months. Cause it'll be a little smaller than 12 months and they were born towards the end of April. So I think, I think that'll be okay. So that is my last work in progress active work in progress uh yeah for this time all right i have some stash enhancement and maybe some chatter to go along with it so there's going to be a little bit more stash enhancement than usual so if you don't want to see it you don't have to um but july is my birthday month so <laughs> so i i did get some yarn um and I'm going to share that now. So I was I was very surprised to receive a lovely package in the mail from um, a lovely viewer and friend on Instagram named Candy. And Candy and I share the same birth date. So happy July birthday to you, Candy, too. And she sent me this lovely package. I was so surprised to get it. Uh, it's very pink. So... Obviously, my friends know me well and know that I love pink. So she sent me this beautiful sock set by uh, Mandy's Makings, which I have not used this yarn before. But it's Jolly and Joy, which I assume maybe this is a Christmas colorway, but it, it also really screams spring to me, too. Spring and summer, just bright. I don't know. I just, I love it. I love it. It reminds me of spring, I guess, tulips, uh, and a cute little mini. I could also see it for Christmas time. It kind of reminds me of like peppermint ice cream, the pink with green and pink chips in it. So it's a lovely colorway, and that's gonna be a fun, fun pair of socks to make. And then she also sent me two uh, skeins of Dishy, the Knit Picks cotton, which I have never used, but always wanted to, so I am, anxious to uh, to use these. I had debated about using using one of these for the July dishcloth, but I thought, nope, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait and show this on the podcast before I use it. So uh, let's see, color name. This is blush and this is begonia. And these are so pretty, so pretty. So um, I am thinking that August cloth pattern when that comes out I will be using one of these but that was a lovely gift so thank you so much Candy I really appreciate it uh let's see next I ordered a bag which may seem crazy to you since I do make my own bags but I could not resist this one this beautiful pink project bag and it's it's a very very good size bag so that's definitely going to be like a sweater bag and the the little quilting on it and then that sweet adorable sheep that hand painted sheep on it i just loved it uh this is by elizabeth who is part of the pearled in texas podcast and i will link i will put her information down below on inst um or maybe i'll link to her etsy shop 
or link to her Instagram profile so you can so you can check this out. Um, but it, if I if I have this story correct, um, she is um, making these bags. She kind of collaborated with her niece on the design. Uh, and her niece is going to be able to go study in Italy, either for the year or for a semester, and so is is trying to raise money, and so her sweet aunt Elizabeth is um, making these bags and selling them to help her niece um, reach her, her dream of going um, abroad to study. So I just think that is so special. It's a lovely bag and really fun handle here. I just think that is so fun and just loop it back through so I really loved that and I loved uh, supporting supporting Elizabeth and her niece um let's see I got let's see I am I am surrounded on my table by things and maybe I have misplaced some things I don't know too much on the table. Um, let's see. I got these two yarns, which I used some birthday money for. Uh, this is uh, the Knitsmith on Etsy, and it is called Barbie Girl. And if you've been with me for a while, you know that I really love, I loved Barbie as a kid. Uh, still, still love Barbie, still love Barbie pink. Uh, I didn't show my project bags that I'm using, but um, one of them is like a vintage Barbie print um, that I had sewn a few years back. So I absolutely love Barbie. With this, I think I think I am planning to make um, the Willa Tee by This Bird Knits. Um, that's another short sleeve tee. I made the Kaiser Tee earlier this summer, spring, and that's also by This Bird Knits. So it's kind of along that same idea, just, you know, a little different texture at the top. So I think, you know, I know I have enough for that, and I think that will be a super fun color. Um, let's see. Somehow I am missing... Oh, no, no, I am not. <laughs> My dear husband gave me an Etsy gift card so I could pick out some some things. So I'm showing one of these, but this was a D stash and I have three skeins of this. This is a Sorella yarn and it's Brooklyn from the Greatest Hits collection. So like I said, I have three of this color and this might look like a little bit different. This doesn't quite look like the, the typical Carla, <laughs> Carla pink or bright palette, but I, ah, this just, this just spoke to me. So my plan with these three, I believe I would like to make my Kaiser tee again, but make it long sleeved. So it for the for the fall. So that's the plan. So lots of sweater plans, Carla. I know, <laughs> but that was from my sweet husband. And then um, I have three skeins. I think this is about it guys. I have three skeins of this yarn. This is, um, this is from Michaels. It's their brand. So loops and threads. It's their cream cotton. So this is a worsted weight and it's 87% cotton, 13% nylon. Uh, it comes with 324 yards. So very, very generous, generous yardage, um, just in the light gray colorway. And I will be including pictures of the sweaters I'm talking about. So you can see which patterns I'm planning to make, but on the cat knits podcast, uh, grace kind of impulsively spontaneously, um, cast on and completed, I believe now her sand shore cardigan, that is a pattern by Alicia Plummer, and I saw that, I thought, oh, that is so pretty. I thought done in cotton, that would be a nice, a nice lighter sweater. I'm just thinking that, um, you know, I tend to be pretty warm in general, and so a, another sweater with cotton would be really nice, and I love the, the meshy texture on that down the back and the band around 
uh, the body. I just think that's going to be so pretty. So yet another sweater I want to cast on. So, <laughs> oh, and if I can find it, um, knitting related, you're not going to be able to see this, but this is a sweet little keychain. And I'll just read it to you. It has a little sweater with knitting needles charms charm on it and it says in the rhythm of the needles there is music for the soul so that was a gift um, from my my sweet sister Laura yeah I thought that was really fun so I wanted to to show that before I start start using that with my keys all right so just a little bit of chatter uh, since I have been gone three weeks uh, we had company I think I had shared that we were going to have that we had company. Yes, that was the start of um, when my father-in-law was here. So he stayed with us a little over a week and we had a really nice visit with him. And then we were trying to figure out when we were going to go visit my family in Michigan. Um, and we were kind of waiting on our daughter Jenna to see if she was coming with us because she kind of toyed with the idea of maybe staying here and working, but she went, she went tell us either way. And we're kind of like, well, we kind of got to figure this out. Well, then she decided that she was going to stay home and work. So she did. And because she was really busy, um, the first week we decided we would go to Michigan during that week um, just because she was super busy at the pool. And then the next week was a little lighter schedule. So we wanted to be gone, I guess, when she was the busiest, just in case she had any kind of, um, you know, homesickness or boredom, not homesickness, but you know, mom and dad not being here. So my father-in-law left on Saturday and we, we left on I'm trying to think Tuesday. We Tuesday? I can't think now. No, Wednesday. Tuesday. No, we left on Wednesday, that following Wednesday, and went to Michigan for um, almost, almost a week. But it was just kind of a hectic time. We usually don't decide in like three days later, you know, go, <laughs> go on, on a trip. So it was kind of really unexpected that we would go that soon. But it did mean that I would be in Michigan um, on my birthday. So that was really nice celebrating with, with my parents. Um, they bought a really beautiful chocolate cake from, from a bakery um, decorated with flowers. So it was really, really nice, really sweet. So chocolate cake with a raspberry filling. So very delicious. Um, got to spend time with other family members, my sister Laura and uh, my brother Thomas, who um, he lives on the other side of Michigan, but I haven't seen him in a few years, not since before COVID. Um, and we got to see him. Um, so just lots of visiting with family, going on um, walks at the boardwalk and going to Lake Michigan. Um, lots of time playing um, Ticket to Ride. I know some of you are familiar with that game, and that's that's one of my favorite things to do besides the knitting. Uh, so lots of Ticket to Ride with my parents. Um, so that was really fun. We got back this week on Tuesday. So we did a full day of driving Tuesday from Michigan to Nebraska, and now just trying to settle into things. So I feel a little bit frazzled um, right now. I have a friend who told me once that when you go on vacation, it takes, when you get back, it takes two days for every day you were gone uh, to start feeling like back to normal. So if I was gone seven days, that means it would take me 14 days, two weeks to feel back to normal in my routine. So I hope that's not actually the case because <laughs> yeah, I do feel a little, little out of it right now. Um, and I feel a little disconnected from, from my knitting. Um, while on vacation, there were four days that I did not knit simply because there was not time. And you guys might think I'm crazy, but if you're knitters, if you're hardcore knitters like me, <laughs> you know, not knitting for those days just that was hard. So um, happy to be back knitting, knitting again. Um, 
yeah, of course it was wonderful visiting with family, and that was that is and was the most important thing to do. But um, you know, I I really missed that knitting. So I had a lot of knitting time in the car, and I'm finding you know finding time now, even as I'm trying to settle back in. Um, but I feel I feel myself kind of thinking about so many different knitting projects right now, as you can kind of see with the different. Um, sweater yarns that I got, you know, just thinking about different sweaters that I want to knit. Um, and yeah, I just feel a little unsettled with my knitting right now. And I know I have that Amelia the duck and I still have to get back to her clothing. So Amelia is sitting over there on a dresser. Um, yeah, she's looking at the ceiling right now. At least she's not looking at me, but I know I need to get back and, uh, knit on her clothes too so there's always so much I want to knit and you know I just I just can't knit fast enough so <laughs> I think that is all for today guys I hope this wasn't too crazy of an episode but I'm really happy that I got to be back and chatting with you about all of the things I have been up to I hope you have been very well over the last three weeks I hope you have had um fun with your knitting or crocheting. Um, if you liked this episode, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And my plan is to be back with you in a couple weeks, in two weeks. It should not be three weeks this time. So with that, take care guys and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.